Hi guys, Victoria Paxton here. Thanks for stopping back by my YouTube channel. Okay. okay, we are at Alexandria National Cemetery. Not to be confused with Arlington National Cemetery, okay? I don't know a lot about this cemetery other than there are parts of it that are really well kept and taken care of, and then there are other parts that are horrible. Um, there are many different cemeteries in one, like different church cemeteries, and they're all together. This place is, like, huge. And I've had, like, a bunch of spirits coming through since we've been here. So I'm going to try to get through this without being interrupted too many times. But so behind the camera over that way, there's someone staring at us and I can't see them <laughs> I can feel them you know when you know somebody's staring at you and I know it's from over there but I can't I don't know where they are so okay like share subscribe all that good stuff it's free doesn't cost you a penny right okay so today we're doing Rachel Mellon Skemp y'all it's another sad one this is horrible so Rachel Marie Mellon was a 13-year-old girl that disappeared from her Bolingbrook, Illinois home on January 31st of 96. So she had a sore throat, so she stayed home that day from school. Her mom went into work. Her stepdad didn't work. He was just some lazy bum, apparently. So he was at home with her. Um, her stepfather's Vincent. He's been a suspect in her disappearance from the, from the jump. Um... So apparently he had scratches all over his body. Uh, he had a history of domestic violence. He failed a polygraph test about her disappearance, okay? But the bum is still out there and he hasn't been arrested, which is pathetic. So this is what her stepdad claims, okay? He claims, oh, Rachel and I, we were playing video games, having, you know, having fun being a dad and daughter playing video games and then she said oh my throat hurts I need to go lay down that's his story so it's like 20 below zero so he decides oh okay since my stepdaughter's laying down here let me just go take the dog for a long walk it's 20 below zero so he claims that he left the door unlocked goes out takes a walk so apparently at some point during this walk, the dog gets off leash and goes to chase after a rabbit. And he can't find the dog. What? A freaking dog is not going to want to be playing outside in 20 below zero. God. So he just goes back home without the dog. Nice guy, right? So 315, Rachel's half-sister comes home and notices that Rachel's gone goes to her dad and says dad Rachel's gone and he's like oh that's impossible she's in her bedroom I left her in her bedroom I know she's in there of course she wasn't there so now he didn't check to see if she was home when he got home he assumed she was sleeping right so then 315 is his daughter comes home and says Rachel's not here so do you think he called the police at that point oh no but wait no there's more so around 4 30 Apparently, some real estate investor, um, some real estate investor, found the dog, and one of the neighbors said, "Oh, that's the Melons dog. They live over there." So at 4:30, he brings the dog. This guy brings the dog back, right? All right, let's keep moving along here. At 5 p.m., Rachel comes home from work. I'm sorry, not Rachel. Rachel's mom comes home from work with her son. And at this point, Vince says, oh, Rachel's gone. I left the door unlocked and I took the dog for a walk and she's gone. So at 6 p.m., the mom gets home at 5 p.m. At 6 p.m., they finally call the freaking police, right? So apparently because Rachel had run away from home the year before, the police said, oh, no, we can't, we can't do anything about it right now. She probably just ran away. So they couldn't even... They didn't even officially start looking for her till the next day, okay? Ugh. Um, okay, so at this point, the next day, the police come in and they discover that her blanket and her two pillows are gone, okay? Believe it or not, the lead detective, I guess, 
was none other than Drew Peterson, the a-hole that's now in prison for killing his, I think, third wife, and his fourth wife, Stacy Peterson, is missing still. And I did a video on Stacy Peterson, so her so the little girl's coat, hat, gloves, boots were all at the house. So it's not like she ran away from home. If she ran away from home, she's grown up in the Chicago area. She knows it's cold. Yeah, it gets better. So <laughs> they interview Vince, her stepdad, and he's got scratches all over his body. And he said, oh, that happened when I was working on the car. Sure, Jan, sure that happened when you were working on the car. So he failed the lie detector test. Jan okay, January of 2000, four years after she went missing, they convened a grand jury. Vince repeatedly pled the fifth, okay? The a-hole pled the fifth. So guess what? Nothing was handed down, so he is still walking free. Pathetic, so freaking pathetic. <sighs> All right. I was able to connect with Rachel. She came through. She was like 10 years old. So apparently when she was 10 is when she was, you know, the happiest. Um, she was a 10-year-old girl. She was happy, bubbly, excited. Um, she talks about how cool it was that I could understand her and I could hear her. And she was so excited to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. She talks about her brother, her sister, her mom. And she even talks about her stepdad a little. She spoke about a her biological dad and how she missed her family um so when i say she talks about her stepdad she talks about how her stepdad would hurt her mom and she would have to grab her sister and her brother and like protect them what a nice guy what a swell guy he was right that he is it's sad Yeah, she talks about like how upset her mom was and how sad it made her and her brother and sister and they were always scared. Okay. So, I happen to ask this question. I said, "Is are your mom and stepdad still married?" And I was kind of blown away by her response. Now, keep in mind she's coming through as a 10-year-old child, right? She said, "Yes, they're still together because my mom doesn't believe that he killed me." Not, yes, they're still together because my mom doesn't believe that he had anything to do with my disappearance. That's not what she said. Because my mom doesn't believe that he killed me. Right. I said, is he responsible for your death? She said, yes. You know, she kind of looked at me like I had three heads. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Um... I asked her if she would talk about what happened. She said she didn't want to talk about it, but she would try to show me some things. Um, so all of a sudden I could see her in a bed and I saw this asshole that I think was her stepdad on top of her. He was hurting her. She was crying. She was trying to fight him. He kind of like moved a little bit and she jumped up like in an instant she jumped up and went running full force um saying i'm gonna call my mom i'm gonna call the police <sighs> yeah she got to the front door and she was literally gonna run out the front door you know what she had on and she had on like i think it was like a Maybe like a little kid's pajama set, you know, like a little shirt and pants, but you could wear it out in public. You know what I mean? It was like that. Um, he grabbed her from behind. She was fighting him. She reached up and slashed him. Like, you know, she was trying to scratch him and do whatever damage she could to him to get away, obviously, right? Um, he had her like this and then he somehow grabbed her and you know was strangling her and shaking her yeah so he noticed that he had 
scratches that were bleeding. So he picked her up, carried her to her bedroom, laid her in her blanket, and he's got, you know, scratches, and he's, they're bleeding. Like, she really was able to do some damage to him. Um, and he literally took, like, a pillow, and he's, like, wiping the blood off, you know, trying to get the blood off. So I think that's why her blanket and pillows were missing, you know? Um, unfortunately, I'm then seeing her being thrown into a dumpster. Um, like, he literally threw her away. You know, she was garbage in his eyes. Um, okay, so you know how most dumpsters... This was 1996. Maybe it was different in Chicago. But you know how most dumpster, dumpsters are, like, dark blue... This dumpster was like a lighter, not a dark green, but a lighter shade of green, and it was covered in graffiti. Um, yeah, the graffiti was just, it was like um, initials and stuff. So I don't know if those are like gang, gangs or something, but it, it, yeah, it was covered in graffiti. The other thing was, the dumpster was like two minutes from the house from where they lived. It was like really close. Um, yeah. So that was all I was being shown. I started talking to her some more. We talked for a little bit longer and she was gone. Um, so damn sad. Like, you know, and I can't help but think of all the bodies that are laying at landfills. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so sad, you know. Um, I, I don't hold out any hope that this asshole is ever going to be arrested. Um, yeah, I don't feel like he's done it since then. But, oh, the one thing I left out, um, you know, I do the connection and then I do the research. And the one thing I left out of the research, um, the police discovered her diary. And in her diary from two months before she went missing, she had written that her stepdad had kissed her on the lips and was touching her inappropriately. And supposedly when he was doing this, he was trying to explain to her, oh, you don't ever let another, you don't ever let a boy do this to you. And then he would act it out. Okay, so this guy is just a freaking piece of shit, you know? Um, yeah, I don't feel like he's done this to, no, you know what? I don't feel like he's murdered another child. Okay, I don't feel that at all. Um, just like I don't think he meant to murder this girl. He just wanted to molest her, right? Um, but I do feel like he's harmed his other daughter. So in my opinion, I think he has harmed his other daughter. Don't sue me, you dumb piece of crap. Um, yeah. All right, guys. So be nice, be kind, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, Reach out to your friends, your family, see how they're doing, check on them. You know, everybody's mental health is all over the place these days. So that about does it for me. Bye, guys.